IndyCar Series fires up the heat and humidity this week in the heart of the Midwest. It's round eight of the 2010 IndyCar Series campaign. IndyCar qualifying from Iowa, the shortest oval of the season. Intense and frantic speeds at over 180 miles an hour, driven by the stars of American Open Wheel Racing. about 30 miles east of Des Moines, Iowa, in Newton, Iowa, and Iowa Speedway for peak pole qualifying for tomorrow's Iowa Corn Indy 250 presented by Pioneer. I'm Bob Jenkins with Jan Bikas and Robbie Buell in the booth. Robbie Floyd and Lindy Thaxton are down on pit lane, and Jack Arood is in the IZOD Performance Pit Center. Well, let's take a look at some of our storylines that we'll be following throughout this weekend. Graham Rahal is subbing for Mike Conway this weekend for Dreyer and Reinbold Racing. This is the last oval race before five consecutive road and street course races and then four more oval track races to end the season. Target Chip Ganassi Racing has a great record here, and Andretti Autosport has five Iowa podiums here at this facility. The first qualifier is Bertrand Baguette. He was 22nd overall in the practice. 176.574 miles an hour was his practice speed. We're trying driving for Conquest Racing. Eric Bachelor, a, a longtime competitor of mine as we came up through the ranks of uh, Indy Lights and the Indy Cars, and we had some, some spearing together, Eric and I did. But, you know, I don't... Bertrand has really done a fantastic job all this year. You maybe haven't seen it in the black and white results, but he has been fast everywhere, solid everywhere. Great run at the Speedway, being the highest finishing rookie out there. Mm -hmm. but, but really has shown speed on these super speedways and ovals that he's never been at before. Right. Now, and Robbie, why you did that, he did two laps already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so seven, 17 happens. second laps. Uh, <laughs> The last two years, qualifying has not been held here, was rained out completely two years ago, and last year it was canceled because of weepers on the track. You can see that Bertrand has two laps at 177 and one at 176. Here is the checkered flag. He completes his four-lap qualifying. We got a bit of a wiggle there. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Don't like to see it. That's the bump. We're going to talk about that bump all day tomorrow during race day. Hopefully we're not going to be talking about it too much in qualifying today, <laughs> especially not with this car. But uh, as you said, Bob, it's a specially designed car. The Hot Wheels guys designed this car. There's a die cast of it. And this is just a one off here for, for Father's Day, Dad's Day right here in Iowa. Graham started ninth last year here at Iowa Speedway. He, of course, has two pole positions in his IZOD IndyCar career. And the first lap for Graham Rahal is 176.884. He ran 178.916 in practice earlier today. But consider, Robbie, if you have a big moment across that bump as you're coming to take the green flag, you're going to lose the momentum right from the get-go. And, and it's not just momentum. It's confidence of, of charging into that corner. What's the car going to do this time? And it can be just a function of temperatures and pressures coming up. And it's very obvious, too, that second lap was considerably faster than lap number one. And here he is completing the third of four laps. Lap number three is 178.912. So he has picked it up on every lap and is as you said, Jan, it definitely killed. <laughs> Look at that number posted in lap one versus lap two and three. And we're going to see some big numbers today higher than this, I think. There will be some that will trim out and go with a sole qualifying setup. And again, faster yet for Graham Yeah, Rayo. up in the 179 bracket to give him an average of 178.312. Graham Ray Hall and Bertrand Baguette have both qualified for tomorrow's IZOD IndyCar race here at Iowa Speedway. And we will continue with our coverage in just a moment. Among those left to qualify, Tony Kanaan. Stay with us for more. Feel 
Eyes on IndyCar Qualifying on Versus is presented by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. And by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. Takuma Sato pulls in the pits after his four-lap run with an average of 180.672, so a good run for Takuma Sato. And now on the racetrack is Will Power, who was second in practice, second quick with a 181.190. One of the keys to getting around this, this short oval, we're not, not a mile long, is to, to get the car to really rotate and turn over in turns one and two. And that's not just for a race car. Yes, you need it for, for race day, but in qualifying, as he rolls down into this corner right here, right in the middle of one and two, as you stay on the bottom, the challenge is to get the car to turn, mechanically get the car to roll the center portion of that. And he is as low, way lower than anybody we've seen so far, taking the short way around. Lap one was 181, second lap is 181.5. And what helps you to stay that low when he comes off there, just as I was saying, is really think of that car turning off that right rear if you can get it to do it. It's, it's great to talk about it in theory, getting it to do it's a whole nother challenge. It is overcast here in the uh, area of Newton, Iowa, and this area has been raked with thunderstorms, even tornadoes the last few days. And there is a chance of rain tomorrow, but hopefully we can get the race in for you. But right now, really good qualifying conditions. Lab number four for Will is 181.198. The average is 181.337. So he is on the provisional pole right now. And Lindy is with Graham Rahal. And Graham's deal really didn't start coming together until just a week ago. So you're already behind a little bit in that way. And then you said you made a really aggressive change to the car before you went out for qualifying. So what'd you think? Yeah, I mean, we've been, it was good to get the opportunity, first of all. And I got to thank Dennis and Robbie and really everybody at Dad for giving me the chance to come here this weekend. Um, yeah, I mean, we tried, we were really struggling with a lot of understeer throughout practice so we tried a really aggressive change and I think the last couple laps were okay but the first couple were a real handful so uh, uh, you know it's just that's what you get for kind of it's such a short weekend and we threw kind of got thrown in here a little bit but uh, I mean the guys are working really hard and I think we got a pretty good race car. Graham thank you and his laps guys as you saw just got faster and faster as his, his run went on. Indeed and now here is Sarah Fisher who was 23rd in practice and just uh, one more observation on the weather that I talked about our thoughts and prayers are with the people up in Minnesota and in fact so many states recently have had some uh, weather problems that have created fatalities so uh, we're thinking about you. All right Sarah Fisher. Lab number one was 177.187 faster than she practiced. And getting way off the yellow line there, mm -hmm. coming off of two, Robbie. It was, but didn't she? She tried coming in low and staying down on that line, but the car just didn't want to stay there. And, you know, when you're keeping your foot flat in it, where's it going to go? It's going to go up the racetrack unless you get out of the gas. Sarah has only raced here once. That was back in 2007, and she finished in seventh position. 178.441 on lap number three, a little bit slower than lap two. And here's the checkered flag, and Sarah Fisher averages for four laps, 178.185. She is fourth of the five that we have qualified so far. And before we went to break, we promised you Tony Kanaan, and he will be the next up as we jump on board with him. This has not been a good place for Tony Kanaan. He has crashed out of all the races that he has participated in here, finishing 16th, 18th, and 14th, and all the crashes have been over in turn number two. Right there, and I remember last year just watching that crash, and they they mic'd him in his helmet right after he hit the wall as he was coasting to a stop. He's like, I can't get a break, <laughs> is what he said. So he kept it clean for everybody on the air, but that is true. He is, he's gotten into that fence every year he's been here, and he was leading the race last year when that happened. Well, he was the fastest in practice at 181.334. Let's see if he can back it up here when 
The chips are down. Here's a completion of lap number one for TK. It's 178.270. Well, way off his average of uh, or his lap of earlier. And a significantly different line than Will Power. I don't think that I have seen anyone in practice run that line that Will Power did. That's the first time we've seen that. Halfway. Two more. Two more. And even lap two doesn't pop up that much. I, I mean, I think a lot of guys are focused on race trim versus qualifying trim. We know Penske came here and tested, so that's maybe why we saw Will Power be where he was on this racetrack. Um, not what TK is going to want, but again, a race car is a totally different animal here than a qualifying car. And if you have a good race car, no matter where you are on the grid here, you can get to the front and be in the game. Checkered flag waves and TK will be third quick at 179.109 for a four lap average. I think we would have lost money on betting that just Any, of what uh, we saw from TK. He's thinking about it. <laughs> uh, anything for the teammates. <laughs> Nothing back from TK on that. Negative on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we go down to the IZOD Performance Pit Center, Jack. And Bob, I'm joined by the provisional pole sitter right now, Will Power, in the Verizon Penske car. Robbie Buell and Jan Bikas were both mentioning how low you were able to keep the car down during that qualifying run. Yeah, I was a little bit worried of what the first lap was going to be like because um, that's the problem around here. It's such a short lap. When you're trying to get up to speed, you're not getting any tire temperature. But the car was solid. Um, no, very, it was quite an easy run, to be honest. And it's just great to get a rising car up there. Will, how difficult is it now to have to sit through the entire queue, as they say, to find out whether you win the peak pole or not? I know, I know. As soon as I picked that, I saw my teammates were like 19th <laughs> and 21st. I thought, man, I'm sitting duck. But uh, hopefully we can have three Penske cars. One, two, three. That'd be awesome. Well, we're going to let you to kind of watch qualifying, and we'll check back in with you. Because you get to stay with us until you get knocked off the pole. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he's so enthused by that. Mario Marias with a pretty good run here. His second lap is 179.091. Well, and we just heard from Will Power of just the challenge of that first lap of trusting what the car is going to do because the laps are so quick around here, just getting pressures and temperatures up. So that's really why we've seen everybody's first lap been a little bit slower and then ramping up quicker from there. Marias has competed here twice. Finished 19th in 2008 and 17th last year. Our tracker says he is going to slot in in fourth position here in the early going of qualifying as the checkered flag comes out. Lap four was 179.3, the average 178.974. Will Power, still the provisional pole sitter, Takuma Sato, and then Tony Kanan. Robbie? And I'm with Tony Kanan now, and he says, I don't know what happened. Where did you lose that speed? Your race trim earlier was quicker than that. Yeah, I have no idea, Robbie. I wish I would have the answer for you, but uh, disappointing. But, you know, I think uh, the only good thing is we do have a, a good race car, but uh, I'm really surprised. Uh, there are things in racing that we still don't understand sometimes. Well, the guys, uh, I heard them come on and say, hey, do you have anything for your teammates? What can you tell them? Did you even learn anything? Uh, I, I actually choose not to say anything. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappoint them. So uh, I stay quiet and I'll talk to them. Uh, I didn't say anything because I had nothing to say. Well, let's find out how Alex Lloyd does. He's looking for a break, and he's still looking for that break, guys. Well, here's a guy who has really been impressive all year long, but especially the last two races. Alex Lloyd finished fourth at the Indianapolis 500 and was eighth last race at Texas. He was 13th overall in the practice earlier today here in Iowa, and his first lap is 178.340. And he's picking up speed. He'll be above 179. By the way, Will Power's four lap average, three one thousandths of a mile an hour slower than Kanan's overall fastest practice lap. Third lap about to be completed for Alex Lloyd. And it is once again in the high 179s. And remember, these are 17 second laps here as they're clicking these off at these average speeds. So it's a, it is absolutely a busy 
little short speedway. Yes, it is. It keeps you busy. Here's the fourth lap, 179.954. Almost 180. It's 179.366. He is third quickest of the eight that have qualified so far. Talking about Alex Lloyd. And Danica Patrick is getting ready to qualify. We will be back for that in just a moment. You're watching Peak Pole Qualifying from Iowa Speedway here on Versus. While we were away, we had a crash. Milka Duno was warming up to take her qualifying run, and in turn number two, she made contact with the wall. And it's over the bump section. You see it's when it, after the bump, Robbie, a lot of times it's the way the car settles, it unsettles it, and Powie into the safer barrier. And it absolutely was the bump that set that off. Now watch the impact into the wall. You got the... Watch the wall just absorb and take that impact. Of course, that's a steel wall and it takes a lot to do that, but just absorbing that energy really takes the hit away from the driver and to the wall and to the car. It is a safer barrier. It is not a soft wall, as they used to yeah. call it. <laughs> she did climb out of the car on her yes, own power, right. we should say. Yeah. Hideki Muto is on the racetrack, Jack. Well, yeah, and as we, as we, Will Power and I were watching that accident and the delay, you pointed out very appropriately that with the sun setting, that's not good for your hole to P1. No, it's right. I was hoping it'd be a smooth run through because uh, it keep, make, makes the, the temperature and the, the track temperature especially uh, the same for everyone. But uh, that's that's it. I mean, some weeks you pick the late, the late run, and some you pick the early. So. Well, we're still going to have to wait and see. I know, yeah. All right. All right. Let's check in with Robbie Floyd. Robbie? Milka Duno, just out of the uh, medical center in 07 and 08, you had to retire due to handling difficulties. Is it safe to say that the car is still having problems this year? No, you have to see the practice this morning. We have very good practice. The car was really good. I feel so bad for my guys, for my team, because the car was really good. But just when we try and qualify, we were maybe pushing so hard from the beginning, and the tires take a little bit more time to be ready. And I lost the, the rear in turn one, two. But the car, you can see the time for this morning was really good, and after it was a really good practice. So. Will we see you tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks, Milka. Yeah, she was 17th quick in practice, and obviously okay. Well, Hideki Muto has a great record here at Iowa. He finished second in 08 and third last year, but he obviously is having major problems because he was slowest in practice and only a uh, 173.468 for his qualifying effort. Danica Patrick will be next on the racetrack. Remember this at Texas? She took to the outside and went around Ryan Briscoe and took the lead. And she had a great evening overall. Eventually, she was repassed by Ryan, but she led a lap and finished in second position. And Ziggy Harkis and the other members of her team were extremely happy. Here in Iowa, she finished sixth in 2008. And she did not have a very good practice period. 22nd overall at 177.923. And I talked to Ziggy Hargis this morning saying that when they rolled this car off of the trailer, three of their drivers were happy. Danica was not. Did not like how positive it was, Robbie, when she turned it in, said it just turned too quickly for her. And let's stay on board right now with Danica and watch the movement in her hands. These are the bumps in one and two. This is what set Milka's car off. Watch the front tires. Look at this. Boom, boom. Well, sometimes it's a lot more graphic. The lap before was a lot more visual and graphic than that, but those bumps as you're getting pressure and temperature up. Let's take another look for it. Here's the start finish line. We're rolling down into turn one. There's a set of bumps there, and then there's another set of bumps yep. there. And you can just see that movement watching that right front suspension. She's above 180 on the last lap. Right now, the tracker says fourth. It could become third. And she might do a 181 here. She did, 181.307, wow. yes, she is third quick. Well, with not being very happy after you talking with Ziggy this morning, that's a, that's a very stout comeback sure there to, to be up in P3 right now ahead of, ahead of TK.
Good job by Danica Patrick. So it's Will Power, Takuma Sato, Danica Patrick, Alex Lloyd, and Tony Kanan, the top five so far. Simona Di Silvestro is on the racetrack. And once again, we go back to the race at Texas. Simona came in contact with the wall in turn number two. An oil fire, e fire erupted, and by the time she had the car slowed down in turn number three, there was a major fire. The Omatro team had a malfunction on the firefighting equipment. It seemed like an eternity before they got her out, but she suffered only a burn on her right hand as she tried to pull herself or push herself out of the cockpit. This, however, is a different car. I spoke to the team, they said essentially they had to throw the other car in the dumpster. There was very little that was usable. If it wasn't damaged in the crash, it got burned. So this is a heavier tub, a spare chassis, and it took a ton of work to get it ready. Yeah, you, you never want to hear that when they're saying, oh boy, there was nothing left. We had to put that thing in the dumpster. That's, that's not a good day leaving a racetrack. Simona's second lap quicker, 177.891 on lap number two. And talking with the, the safety team, the Homotro safety team, I mean, those guys evaluate that. They realize what happened. And, you know, still to this day, those guys are the best in the business. Right. And there's nobody you want coming to help you more than them. You know, they had a bit of a hiccup. It is corrected. And uh, nobody you know, feels worse than they do. Oh, no, exactly. <laughs> so I just, you know, they are the best. All right, Simona Di Silvestro takes the checkered flag, and her four-lap average is 177.919. She is ninth on the speed chart right now of the 11 that have qualified so far. And Lindy is with Alex Lloyd, who right now is fourth quick. In fourth position, Bob, hard to believe, Alex, you had an appendectomy this week. You twittered, you sneezed, and it hurt. How in the world are you in this car? Uh, it's a little, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty tough. I mean, I was feeling reasonably good yesterday, pain-wise, uh, just just a little tired. It seems to take a little while to bounce back, and certainly in the car, you can feel it a little bit. Not, not actually when I'm in the car, but when I get out of the car. Um, so I think it's going to be a pretty long day tomorrow, um, but I, I mean, I, I'll be fine. I'll be, I'll be fine. There'll be no problem. I mean, I had a, had a good 45-minute sleep before qualifying so I don't normally do that but I felt like I needed it a little bit today just to kind of try and recharge my batteries but uh, yeah I mean I'm just happy to be here I mean they do a pretty good job now at getting you recovered quickly so uh, yeah happy happy to be out racing and I uh, wasn't sure a week ago but glad to be here. Thank you Alex and we'll see you tomorrow and Robbie Floyd has caught up with Danica. Robbie? Yeah Danica Patrick in a GoDaddy car were you surprised with that speed you were turning looked like that wasn't the same car we saw in practice? Um, I, I, I'm really happy with the last couple laps I was able to hold it flat those were the first laps I've held it flat all day so um, it was uh, it's just it was it, the, the car we do we still need to do some work to it but you know I think that given those last couple laps and kind of what I felt I feel like I can give my engineer some some more direction as to wh which way we need to go with it um, but but I guess at the end of the day I, I am pretty happy with that and it was a big improvement from this morning speaking of work you were working the tools in the car as well it wasn't just a drive in the park um, yeah I, I did work the tools a little you know, uh, not as much as probably some people have, but uh, yeah, I was chasing it a little bit. Um, it's just, man, that bump in one and two is just so big. It's so deceiving what it's what's going to happen with the car on the other side of it. So, you know, the GoDaddy car is in a decent position right now. We'll see what happens as it goes. That's P3 right now, the number two car of Rafael Montos on the track. Yeah, and he gained three miles an hour from lap one to lap four, averaging 177.842, and he is currently 10th. Dario Franchitti among those to qualify when we return to Iowa Speedway. The winner of this year's Indianapolis 500 will go before long here at Iowa. Stay with us here on Versus. We are back at Iowa Speedway for peak hole qualifying. And on the racetrack is Justin Wilson, who was the ninth fastest in practice with a speed of 180.414. Will Power continues to hold on to the provisional pole. Takuma Sato, Danica Patrick, Alex Loy, Tony Kanan are your top five. And I talked to Justin this morning and I asked, how do you like this car, this setup, this dryer and Reinbold setup? He says, it is so different than what I had in the past. I went out and could run flat out right away. He said, I'd never done that before. Wow. 
Yeah, last year I remember uh, he got in the wall during the race, but I, I went back and just watched. He had an absolute handful of a race car every time he went out there last year. Good lap, 180.225 on lap number two. By the way, while we were away, Mario Romancini clocked in at 176.436, 13th out of 14th. And Justin Wilson, let's see, lap number three is also above 180, 180.206. But by the line he's running and confirms what he said there only been working on race setup so for a race setup this is great we've seen maybe some specific qualifying setups this isn't one of them well it's not that way just i mean look where he's running relative right. to the yellow line you know where are you going to put your time working on your race car your qualifying car when we come into a two-day weekend i think that you know that makes sense if that's your your plan fourth quick 179.875 for justin wilson And now taking to the Iowa Speedway is Dario Franchitti, who has never lost a race here. In 2007, rather, Dario Franchitti just beat Marco Andretti to the finish line for a win, and then he also won here at Iowa Speedway after taking a year off in 2008 to run NASCAR in 2009 he won again this time beating Ryan Briscoe so two wins for Dario Franchitti and he was fifth fastest in practice at 180.797 so what will be interesting to watch here Jan is if we just go back to what Will Power did is where is he going to be relative to that well he's third quick 180.439 on lap one so what do you think well, I didn't hear the time. What is he doing? He's third quickest. <laughs> well, that's good so far. <laughs> wait till he finishes. He's definitely running a little longer distance around here. He's not, he doesn't stay quite to the yellow line when he tracks off right, right there coming off of turn two, as Will did. Close to 181 there on the second lap. Let's we'll see if he... He should get 181 this time. Yeah. Rock roll lap. Yep, he moves up to second quick. I don't blame you if you don't like Jan. <laughs> but he just said, okay, he's second quick now. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I, I'm <laughs> more, more worried about my teammates. I mean, uh, I think they got what I got. Let's, Let's see, see what the bottom going. line is here, guys. All right, stays at second. 181.175 on the fourth lap. 180.859. The four lap average for Dario Franchitti. So it's Power and Franchitti on the front row. We're a little more than halfway through the uh, qualifying here this afternoon. Lindy is with Simona Di Silvestro. Simona, first of all, how's your hand since the Texas fire? Pretty good, you know, no more blisters anymore. It's, it's gone, so we're all ready to go pretty much. <laughs> good, and I understand this is your first short track ever. What's challenging about it? Uh, it is pretty challenging because you feel like you're turning your wheel like all the time and uh, it's pretty small. You know, the laps go by really quickly, but uh, it's a fun track. You know, I think uh, the race is going to be exciting. Uh, also with all the people are going to show up and I'm, I'm excited to race here. Simona, thank you. Thank you. Robbie? Another driver who has first turned at a short track. Uh, Takuma Sato, you surprised a lot of people jumping up there in second. You're sitting in third now. Are you happy with that? I should be happy, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, you should. <laughs> How did it feel? It has to be different for you. It, it is different. I mean, it's definitely one of the, uh, the, the busiest circuit, shall I say. Uh, the last three orbits was always a great experience. You know, I mean, Kansas, Texas are very similar. I mean, Indy 500 is different. But here, with, with a, such a short oval, with a massive downforce on it for, from road course and the super speedway tires, so the combination is very different. Uh, F1 of experience, but have you ever done anything that resembles this kind of racing ever? I don't think I've done 18 seconds of the lap, so I, this, is, this is definitely the busiest. <laughs> Good job out there. Thanks. Well, Bob. his best oval start was at Kansas and Texas. He started 11th. Now his best start in the series was at Barber Motorsports Park early this year. He started in sixth position. How's Tag doing? Hey, pretty good here. Up to third quick. Another 181. This team has really been impressive this year from the very first race. From the rollout down in Brazil, yep. fast. Here's the checkered flag, and he stays third, 180.851.
is the four lap average for Alex Tagliani. He is third quick. Knox and you Takuma talk down. about this team, Bob, and this is the only place now that's left with a short oval setup. It's the only time of the year you uncork it, considering with no database. Nice job. Well, you heard Will Power say he was worried about his teammates. Well, we got a whole bunch of people coming up here that could knock him off, including Elio, Scott Dixon, and Ryan Briscoe. Back in a moment. I watched the tour on versus. You know, I think everybody did that. It was in America at the time, uh, obviously, when Lance Armstrong was killing it. I'm a big fan of Lance Armstrong, and matter of fact, we have FRS on board, which supports Lance. The Tour de France is unreal. I, I love watching it. I think it's awesome, especially that I cycle a lot. One of my longest rides was 100 miles, and those guys do 150, 200 miles a day. It's a man's sport, very tough. You know, everyone, I think, admires Mr. Armstrong, and you can see versus coverage of the Tour de France beginning July 3rd at 11.30 a.m. One of the biggest sports extravaganzas in, in the world, and you will see it on versus beginning on July 3rd. E.J. Viso has taken the checkered flag. He's qualified good enough for 12th out of 17, 178.091. And now on the racetrack is Elio Castro Neves, who was 10th fastest in practice. He sat on the pole here last year. And they're just getting up the speed here to take the green flag. So, Will Power, what do you think about your teammate here? I'll tell you in a couple of laps. <laughs> All right, guys, he's watching he's, he's along gonna, with us. He'll be quick. I mean, you know, he's got what I got, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'd love to have Paul, but if I can't get it, it's got to be one of my teammates. <laughs> All right, here's lap one. Definitely. That's quick. And definitely running a little bit higher off that yellow line. But sometimes, if the car doesn't want to stay down there, you actually slow it down by keeping it down there. You got to let the car have its head a little bit and go where it wants versus forcing it to stay down on that yellow line. But now he's keeping it down. 181.018 on lap two. He's still fifth fastest. Tracker says he's going to move up. And he stayed way down off of, he stayed way down off of two that time. I think he had a reminder to, for the front bar, which is the front NA roll bar. Pretty close off that yellow line coming off of two down the back chute. I think you've dodged a bullet here, Will. I think uh, you're safe for the moment. Here is lap number four, and the average four laps is 180.884, so he moved up to second. It's but, close. Yep. <laughs> hey, guys. Close. He, he's guys, in the one second. Of the things, guys, one of the things that he was going to do, Will Power wanted to do, was run over and tell Elliot it was okay to go below the white line. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, I radioed to Ryan and said, you got to go below the, the, the yellow line it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's an all Penske front row as we speak. Dario just got knocked off the front row. He's third quick, Lindy. Both times Dario's been here, he's won, and I know you say stats don't matter, but neither of those times you started first, so does that make you feel a little bit better now that you're at third? <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's the silver lining. I would definitely like... I try to be. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. I would definitely like to start front with a target car, but, you know, anytime we try to qualify in simulation, we just didn't have the, the pace in the car today, but race pace... I think is a different thing. I feel quite comfortable with the car. Um, we need to do a couple of small changes overnight, but I feel we've got a car that we can uh, we can contend with. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Dario, thank you. Thank you. Robbie Floyd. And I'm with Alex Tagliani. Tags, you got knocked back to fourth. You were displeased about that, but you said something to me a minute ago. Said this place reminds you of a velodrome. How so? Well, the track is so short that uh, if you can run down the bottom, obviously track distance is uh, is huge. And uh, very pleased with the Bowers and Wilkins car. We just needed to run a little bit lower, but uh, very pleased. Thanks, Tex. Thank you. Guys? Hey, this is a good run for Scott Dixon. He's second quick after two laps. Look how smooth he is right on the line. And the third lap is 181.4. He's still second.
You heard Alex talk about wanting to be lower. That's the whole trick here is you want to run low, but you don't want to run so low that that bump unsettles you in turn two. It's always a balancing act. <laughs> Look at Will's face. We're watching too, Will. <laughs> and he is still second Same. quick. 181.332. So that's close. That was a great run there. That yeah, was. That is very close. And now you got to uh, sweat our, through. You got to sweat through Ryan Briscoe here, your other teammate, as we get down to the uh, final few qualifiers. There's Dixon's four lap average. Ryan Briscoe is on the racetrack, and we all remember what happened a couple of weeks ago. He was able to get around Danica Patrick, and when he did, he drove away for his first win of 2010. Ryan Briscoe visiting Victory Lane at Texas Motor Speedway. Who in the donuts on the starting line? All right, let's see what he can do now here at Iowa Speedway, a totally different racetrack. The banking here is 12 to 14 degrees. It's what they call parabolic banking. It's 12 degrees at the bottom, and it goes up to 14 at the top. Let's see what he can do. Lap one, oh, seventh quick, 180.225. What happened there? Well, that's promising. <laughs> uh, I hate this. <laughs> Why couldn't I have picked the numbers later in the session? Yeah, it's been a long afternoon here. Second lap is 180.6, just a little bit faster, so he uh, is not going to be able to do it. And with just about four more to go, Will is looking pretty good. We got Dan, uh, Dan Weldon to go, and Vitor Mira, and Marco Andretti. Ryan is the only of the three Penske drivers that didn't test here, but he said it doesn't really matter because they all like similar setups. Yep, we're all pretty close. <laughs> and here's the checkered flag. Briscoe ends up sixth quick. Make that seventh quick, 180.911. Maybe the track got slower. <laughs> So just four more cars remain now. Can Will Power survive a long afternoon here and walk off with the peak pole position? We'll see you when we come back. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway versus coverage of peak pole qualifying at Iowa Speedway. And we're on board with Ryan Hutter Ray, who, well, his, uh, his season, many thought, might end at Texas because uh, funding had run out. However, Ethanol USA has stepped up, and Ryan Hutter Ray is in the cockpit again this weekend. And his first lap was 179.224. That's 11th quick. He was 16th fastest in practice. Here's lap number two. It's 179.4. Maybe not the sheer speed that, that Ryan would want, but again, when we were going on board with him in practice, just watching his in-car, it really looked like he had a pretty stable race car. Remember, he's a teammate to the Andretti Autosport guys, but especially Kanan and him having similar styles. And we know Kanan's qualifying effort wasn't where he want, but he was very confident of the race car. And he just looks like he's got a good, calm race car when you watch him on board there. And you can hear he's dumped the throttle. He's taken the checkered flag. He's 10th quick, and the four-lap average for Ryan Hutter Ray is 179.666. Lindy has caught up with Elio Castro Neves. Elio, you started one or two the past three years, but you struggled a bit in practice today. So are you okay with starting three? Yeah, I'm very happy actually to uh, to be able to put that time there. Uh, Ron Rosicki again. This guy keeps like digging, and I'm like, dude, you got to do your magic, okay? And uh, certainly he did. Uh, Will did a hell of a job as well, and uh, Scott just uh, breaking a little bit of the front row there. But certainly we're happy, and. Um, we can win races from there, for sure. Elio, thank you. And Robbie Floyd, Elio, the only driver who's here to lead every race here. 
The guy that was closest to Will Power, Scott Dixon, five ten thousandths of a mile an hour. That's close, but he was the car doing what you wanted. Could you keep it on that line? Yeah, the target car was definitely pretty good. You know, uh, the first few laps here around Iowa are always very tough. You know, it's hard to keep the car down the bottom. It wants to skate around. And obviously, the rear over the bump in turn one and two is, uh, is always tough. And you can see that, you know, you can fall into the clutches of the wall there. But all in all, you know, pretty happy with that. You know, we came so close, but uh, hopefully we can turn that into a win tomorrow. And he knows that the target Chip Ganassi cars are fast here. They've won here the last two years, Bob. And let's not uh, give the pole to Will yet. Well, second lap was a little bit slower than the first for Marco Andretti, so he right now is fourth fast. Was a good start. But the car, and when you hear, hear Will Power talked about how it was easy, and he <laughs> kept it on the line, that's a, <laughs> that's a perfect setup for qualifying. It's not what you necessarily want for the race. <laughs> No, you want to have something that's good on the bottom, in the middle, and on the top. Fourth lap for Marco Andretti, 181.3. The average, 181.005. He is third quick, so he knocks Elio down one notch. And we've still got a couple of more to go. Namely, Vitor Mira and Dan Weldon, but uh, let's see what Lindy has in store. Well, Ryan Briscoe, how did the car feel out there for you? It wasn't bad. Uh, you know, we've been working so much on the race setup, and, and I think we sort of steered the car a little bit more away from, from the optimal qualifier setup, more towards something that's good for the race. So hopefully it is tomorrow, but it wasn't that bad. You know, I just think the time's so close. We were about probably half a tenth off, and, and that's enough to sort of fall outside the top five. But the car's been pretty solid all day long in practice, and, uh, you know, hopefully it's, it's better than a seventh place car in the race. I think it is. Ryan, thank you. And Bob, Ryan and Sato were running the exact same pace out there. Yeah. Right now, Sato and Briscoe tied to the ten thousandths of a second over four laps. Vitor Mira is qualifying, but he is the only one to bump the safer barrier before Milkaduno did right there. And that's a case where you hit those bumps down in one and two, and there you see the the universal language for a driver explaining what happened to his team owner, A.J. Foyt. You usually want to make it take a step back there, Vitor is explaining <laughs> that from A.J. But you hit that bump, and it just set off the, the right front, Vitor was saying, and it just never came back after he went across that bump. And he's trying to leg it, too. You know, he wasn't out for a Sunday drive. He was trying to do a, a qualifying simulation when that happened. His final word to A.J. was, but the car's good. Yeah, car's right. good. The car's good. <laughs> yeah. Checkered flag, and Vitor Mira ends up 12th fastest at 179.615. Just one more car to go. And Will Power could walk off with another pole position this year. There's Vitor Mira's four lap average. Currently in 12th position. And now we get to the National Guard car of Dan Weldon. We told you about how Elio is undefeated here. Well, Dan Weldon was the winner driving for Target Chip Ganassi the year that Dario was driving in NASCAR. So Dario and Dan Weldon, the only two winners here at this racetrack. And he was eighth quickest in practice earlier today. And Robbie is with Marco Andretti, third quick. 26 and third, the Venom car. Now, were you happy with that run? Because you've been fast here before, a second or third place in 07 and 08. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have to be happy with it. But, uh, you know, the competitive, my competitive side is a little bummed because in practice we kind of had a pole car. And, you know, in choosing our downforce level, I think we missed the center pressure bit. I had a lot of understeer. So, uh, you know, oh, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's done now. The practice and the uh, qualifying's over with for Marco Andretti. But I think he has a very fast car for tomorrow, guys. Dan Weldon, 180.036 on his second lap. And lap number three keeps him in the 11th spot. And it's worth noting what Robbie said earlier, that starting 10th, 11th, whatever this shakes out to be, you can win 
from any of those spots because the race setup and the conditions are so much different. Second flag done, second flag. And now the qualifying is over, and Dan Weldon ended up 10th quick at 179.902. The difference between first and second, Power and Dixon, two one thousandths of a second over four laps. Unbelievable. Will Power has won the pole. And we will be back to talk with him and give him the Peak Pole Award in just a moment. Eyesod IndyCar Qualifying on Versus is presented by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway, where Will Power is being presented the check for the Peak Pole Award. This is his fourth pole of the season, and Will, we normally think of you as a road street course guy. This is your first oval pole. Are you really coming into these ovals? Yeah, definitely. In the last two races, you know, we've been in uh, actually positions to win and had a fast car, so um, this is my first pole. Hopefully, I can make it my first win tomorrow, and uh, just happy to have the Verizon car up the front again. Will Power, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And this, Bob, is the seventh pull in a row for Team Penske. Wow. Pretty impressive statistics there. Uh, this was Will's sixth career poll as you take a look at the uh, lineup in the Eyes on IndyCar Series. His 12th career poll in open wheel racing ties him for 23rd with Parnelli Jones. And Takuma Sato, there's a, a name that we should uh, pay attention to tomorrow. He'll start in seventh position, a good run for him. Alex Lloyd will start back in 14th. 15th will be Tony Kanan. Simona Di Silvestro in 20th after his her fire at Texas. And there you see the remainder of the lineup for tomorrow's Iowa Corn Indy 250 here at Iowa Speedway. Well, guys, this should be fun. Always a very competitive race here, a two-groove racetrack, sometimes three. It'll be fun. Well, it is. And, you know, this is a short oval. But it's got the characteristics of a super speedway, and things just happen so fast around here in 18-second laps. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. And exciting to see in practice there was definitely two grooves, and they were working two yep. grooves. Yep. You have to have two grooves to have great racing, and so far, looks like it's alive. You bet. We hope that you will be with us. Well, coming up next, Bill Murray stars in Caddyshack. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the Iowa Corn Indy 250 at 1.30 Eastern. For more information on the Eyes on IndyCar series, go to Versus.com. Congratulations to Will Power. The